So if you would, you can come on back okay. and get started. Okay. They uh, gave me your paperwork mm -hmm. when I first got here. Okay. Um, so fill fill me in. You're applying for a uh, your right. for a peace officer badge. Right. Correct? Right. Okay. And now I, I went to the other building, but they said I had to come over here. What other building? The one on uh, Broadway, 501 Broadway. Oh, the federal courthouse? Uh, is that the courthouse? At 8th and Broad? Five, yeah, five, I guess. Oh, Central Precinct of it. Yeah, 500 right. Draw, right, 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 500, okay. right, right. All right. All right, fill me in. What, do you, what exactly are you seeking with these? I haven't really had time to look. I just got here just a few minutes okay. ago. Okay. So, um, what what are you applying for? Exactly? Well, it's just it's just a sovereign peace officer badge uh, because I don't know if you're familiar with the common law jurisdiction. I don't know if you're familiar. No. Okay. Tell me. Okay. Well, with common law, I mean most people don't know about. It. The only thing most people know about common law is common law marriages. Mm -hmm. uh, with the common law peace officer, basically my jurisdiction is not bound like a county police or a city police. I can actually go anywhere because common law is all fifty states. Okay. You know, and so. So you're you're not bound by the state line as well, or are you saying right, anywhere within the right. state? Right. In any 50 states. Okay. Right. Because that's common law jurisdiction. That's actually constitutional. Okay. Right. So uh, do you so have to apply for each state? No. Nah. You just you just pick your state. Right. Whatever state you residence. Right. Okay. Right. Once you do that, and see what I was told is that once I I come to you all's office, that you all would actually have the facts or. How, I guess I have to have a letter from you all in order to either fax, or you will always have to issue it, or you all will have to, I will have to get a fax from you all to actually send to get my uh, peace officer's badge. Because it's not police officer, it's a peace officer. Okay. All right. I'm going to take notes here while we're talking. Okay. So who actually... Uh, issues you the peace officer badge? I mean, it would be the state of Tennessee. I mean, it would be under, because you all fall under the state of Tennessee. Mm -hmm. So, what, what office do, will you take your paperwork to to file that will actually give you the badge? Like they, I, I was told this one. Okay. Yeah, I was told this one, the headquarters. They said I had to come to headquarters. Now, did they say that because we're uh, the county seat? Is that why they're saying Right, that? right, because this is the headquarters, too, you know. So they right. said, well, you got to go to headquarters. Government. Right, right. So they told me you got to go to headquarters in order to get the uh, either the letter or they would issue, because my badge would be different than you all's, because it, it has to have on there peace officer, sovereign peace officer, not police officer. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if, if you all would actually have to use the funds to do that, or would that come out of my pocket? Right. I'm not. I'm not uh, familiar if it comes out of y'all or out of mine. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Do you have something that spells out all the steps that you take to go through this process? No, not um, not at hand. I can probably get it. Or do you know where we could get a copy of it? Uh, you could probably go. It's a website um, off the top. I think it's Fam Guardian. All one word. Right, all one word. I think dot org. Mm -hmm. uh, because they they explain like what the common law, constitutional law, uh, and the jurisdiction, and what that entails. Okay, so it encompasses more than just the peace right. officer badge. Right, right. I mean, okay. it, it encompasses everything because like right now, my status. I'm a U.S. non-citizen national. A lot of people don't know what that means. It's different than a Fourteenth Amendment U.S. citizen. You know, I was born here and I'm a national. 
but to be a U.S. citizen, that means you're bound by the IRS codes, which I'm not. That's why if you saw my paperwork, you see my, um, my tax status for non-resident alien. Because most people don't realize that actually the IRS is operating illegally in the United States. Is that, uh, when you refer to that, you refer to this affidavit of oath of allegiance? Right, right. I had to, I had to take that. You know, they had to have that notarized and stamped on the common law. Mm -hmm. And it might be on there. I think it's over there, the one about the tax. Yeah, it's, it's a process. I mean, it's a lot of paperwork you have to file in order to get that status. It's just not, you just can't walk in and get it. I mean, it's a lot of stuff you have to go through. Mm -hmm. A lot of forms you have to file. So this W-A-B-E-N file? Right. Uh, for the, I guess, non-resident alien right. status? Right. Um, you just get that off the IRS website? Right. Now, have you, do you electronically file this? To the IRS, or do you? You can either you can either electronically or you can mail it. Okay. Or if you have a local office, you can actually take it in. So if you've already filed this one, right? In July, did you uh, fax this in? Email it? I mailed it. Mailed it in. Mm -hmm. Okay. I usually mail everything and certify mail it just to make sure okay. that it got there and I have a record of it, you know. Did you receive anything back from them? Not yet. Did they say how long it takes? They say usually 45 days before you hear something, so. And then, and then once you file this and it's on file with RS, this entitles you right. to be a non-resident alien. Does that mean you're exempt from... Uh, federal income tax? Right, income tax, all of that. Because all that is really, see, most people don't realize if you read the tax code, paying taxes through the IRS is actually voluntary, but most people think it's mandatory and it's not. Uh, they just had a court case, I don't know if you're familiar with a guy named Witty Harrell. The IRS tried to sue him for not paying taxes, and he won because there is no tax code that says you have to pay taxes on your income. Now, according to the Constitution, you pay taxes on whatever you profit from a business, mm -hmm. but your earned income wages is not business. That's, that's an exchange. You're exchanging your work for pay. That's not profit, but most people don't know that. Right. Where was the Harold case? What, do you know where was the Harold case? I want to say California. But you can just like type its name. It's a witty W H I T E Y Harrell H A R R E L, and kind of Google it, and it should pull up his trial. Okay. Mm -hmm. How long ago was that? Been? I think four or five years. Okay. So probably 2005, 2006, somewhere around there. Yeah, somewhere right now. This year, you paid. Yeah. You paid for federal tax. Right. Right. So as long as you, as long as you have that U.S. citizen status, then you have to because you're bound by that contract to mm -hmm. do that. But the only way you exempt is if you uh, expatriate yourself and become a U.S. national, American mm -hmm. national, or U.S. non-citizen national. Okay. And what what form do you fill out to declare that? Uh, it it would be separate from this. Yeah, it's, yeah, right? it's separate, yeah, it's separate from so that. So it's not in this package? Right now, it's okay. not in that. Yeah, it's separate. It, that's actually a longer form. It's like 20 pages. Okay. Yeah. So you've already, you, yeah, I've already, already filled right, that out? Yeah, I've already done that. And you submit that to who? To the IRS. Okay. Yeah, all them two. And then you actually send one to the IRS and to the United States Citizen Immigration Services. The USCIS, okay. yeah, you had to send one of them, too. So how long ago did you fill that form out? That was last month, too. Last month? Right, that was last month. So I'm just waiting on my, they supposed to send me a certificate uh, of nationalization, uh, the U.S. non-citizen nationalization. So I should be getting a certificate, hopefully within that 45-day period. Okay. And then once you get that, right. that's a requirement to satisfy right. this. Right, right. 
Okay. Right. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a tedious process, but you know, once you go through it, you know, you'll definitely reap the benefits of it. So this religious exemption affidavit? Right. This is in lieu of a driver's license? That's correct. And because unless you are a U.S. citizen, you're bound by having to have the license and registration. But once you are not a U.S. citizen, then you're not. You're not bound by that. Does this require you to have any type of uh, international driver's license or international permit? No, you like can that? get one, but it's not necessary. You can, but it's not necessary. Now, if you're going to go travel to another country, then they probably will require that you do get one international, because that's only for the United States. Mm -hmm. Just copy of your birth certificate? Right, right. They just proved that who I am. Do you have an official, uh, like mm -hmm. a certified copy, mm -hmm. if, if they need one? Right. Mm -hmm. You see, the, all those, those are just copies that actually was filed in the uh, Register of Deeds office, in the County Register of Deeds this office. This was? Yeah, all of that. All of that is in, it has a copy on public record, because by law I have to do that. Did you file? Right. Now, is this, a, is this a form that you got uh, from the state? Uh, I see it has a, a seal in the U.S. seal right. here. Is this something that you just get and you you fill it out, or did you just, or is this uh, something you got up from this website? Right, you just, no, you draft that. You draft the, um, the oath of allegiance or the oath, um, and basically you make, make sure you have the proper wording in there, mm -hmm. and you sign it, but you have to have it notarized. You know, you have to have it notarized, and then once you notarize it, you got to make sure that notary is valid. That's why you got to go to down to the county to make sure that that notary is the valid notary to basically notarize that document. Uh, you have to file it in the county. Uh, the county, the state, has basically 30 days to rebut it. Once you put it on public record, if they don't rebut it, then they can't come back and say, well, no, we can't issue that because, you know, we don't want to. They had actually, and I actually gave them 60 days to actually uh, view it, uh, put it in a legal notice, also in a newspaper for four weeks to make sure, because by law you have to do that. Okay. So so this form itself is just something that you made up to right, satisfy the requirements? The requirements, right. Okay. Right, to be a sovereign peace officer. And again, you said that was in this famguardian.org? No, no, that's not no, that's not on the form. That's just like a guideline I got from the website, but I drafted the, the form myself. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. And this other packet, uh, is this what you're filing this just basic, basically saying that you're... Uh, that I can represent myself in propria persona if, if need be, like if I have to go to court or anything like that. I represent myself in propria persona. That's why I, you know, give my own self power of attorney. Because if you don't do that and you go to court and you represent yourself pro se, you can basically get yourself in trouble because you haven't done your due diligence and got your paperwork on file. Okay. So this this doesn't have really anything to do with your peace officer. Oh no, uh, no, just that's just something separate. else. Yeah, that's something okay. separate. Yeah, all that's separate. And all this was filed at the same time? Right. Yeah, it was a postilio at the same time, but all of them, some of them were filed in the county at different times. Some of them got different document numbers on them. Okay. So ba basically now you're waiting on the IRS for your reply to your right. your uh, non-resident right. uh, form. Right. And then you're waiting on... Um, a certificate of nationalization. Right. Right. Which... You will then therefore right. send to the IRS. Right. Okay. And that's it. Okay. And these are our copies that. No, you to can you can make copies of those because okay. those are actually my actual real copies from the. But y'all can make copies if okay. you like. You can okay. do that. All right. Well, 
I'll take those upstairs then, and okay. then, and we'll uh, we'll get started on okay. on what we need to do. Okay. But I uh, appreciate you coming by. Uh, no problem. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm.